Hello and welcome to Dollars and Cents, the Australian Street podcast where we're talking about just what the hell is going on in the economy. I'm Eleanor Johnston Leake, the senior content producer here at the Australia Institute, and as always, I'm talking to our chief economist, Greg Jericho. Hello, Gregory. <laughs> Gregory, oh my goodness, very formal. <laughs> and it might not even my mother calls me Gregory, so yes. Hello, yeah. hello, <laughs> Eleanor. I can't even lengthen Eleanor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Eleanor Johnston Leake. Uh, now, Greg, I would say it's your favourite time of the month. Uh, GDP <laughs> figures are out, but the reaction to them has been pretty gloomy, so I don't know if it feels appropriate. Fa- favourite time of the quarter. Of the Let's quarter. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here. Yeah. You know, they only come out every three months. Um, yeah, GDP figures, or the national counts as they're officially called, and for those who have um, been listening for a while now, they'll know, but I'll recap GDP basically counts everything that involves money changing hands in the economy, whether you're spending it, whether you're getting paid, whether a company is making profits, whether a company or the government is investing, things like Job Seeker, things like spending on the NDIS, exports, imports, all of that all gets counted and comes into this wonderful thing called the GDP. That means it's not counting things like, oh, you are caring for your child at home, you were doing the washing. Sorry, you didn't get paid to do that. But if you yeah. hired someone to take care of your child or do the washing, that would get counted. So it's the money changing hands. It's the money changing hands thing. So it does yeah. miss out on a lot of things. It uh, doesn't measure joy, <laughs> <laughs> but it does measure how good the economy is going. And doesn't yeah, the, that bring you joy, Greg? It, well, it brings me some joy, I must say, because I'm a nerd who loves spreadsheets. You said it, not me. But these figures this this quarter, not much joy around. Pretty no. dreadful, pretty terrible. And it's really tough to even sort of find any sort of positive notes, i got to say, when it, I was it's, looking through It's that bad. The economy has almost ground to a standstill. Growth for the June quarter came in at just 0.2%, 1% for the year. The private domestic part of the economy is basically flat, making almost no contribution to economic activity. There's only two factors that are keeping us out of recession at the moment. One is population growth. Treasurer Jim Chalmers has credited record government spending for keeping Australia out of recession. Without Without growth in government spending, there'd be no growth in our economy at all. And economists say that that shows interest rates have done their job and it's time that the Reserve Bank rethinks its position. Yeah, you know, it's it's sort of the opposite of a beautiful set of numbers to, to use Paul Keating's phrase about one of the budgets he delivered. When you sort of go through it, whether you're looking at wages, whether you're looking at household spending, profits, uh, even trade, there's nothing really there that is at all sort of uh, giving you this sense that, oh, there's some positivity here. There's some sort of uh, energy in the economy. It's yep. all pretty much dour. And the reason being, of course, is, as everyone knows, uh, the Reserve Bank hiked interest rates and, yeah, that had an impact. So has it finally happened, Greg? Are we in a recession? No. Not We're yet. not in a recession. No. Um, People might have heard the term per capita recession, and that's because when we look at the figures, okay, so in the the June quarter, so June quarter is April, May, and June. In those three months, the entirety of the economy rose 0.2%, which is, to be perfectly frank, putrid. It's, <laughs> it's you know, yeah, it is barely anything. But because that is including everything that has been spent. That means if more people come into the country through migration or our population increases, those people are spending more money and that increases the economy. But if we strip out that population growth and get this thing called GDP per capita, which in a sense is GDP divided by the entire population of Australia, when we look at it in that sense, GDP per capita fell 0.4%. 0.4%. So it went backwards. Mm. But more importantly, that was the sixth consecutive quarter oh, that wow. GDP per capita fell. And that's a record. That it's has a record. never happened before. Oh, wow. Not in the 1980s recession, not in the 1990s recession, not in the GFC, not even in the pandemic. It's never happened before. The ABS, the Bureau of Stats, started counting GDP back in at the end of 1959. 
and it's never happened in all that time. So we're not in a recession, but it's really not good at the moment. Yeah, so GDP per capita, the reason why um, – wait, no, I'll stop. I'll go back. Basically, remember, when we talk about recessions, the technical term is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. So the economy shrinking basically yeah. over six months. Now you think, okay, but the economy shrunk over 18 months <laughs> when we take out population, and that's true, but – that doesn't lead to the type of things that we see during a real recession. Like if the total economy had been shrinking for 18 months, unemployment would have absolutely skyrocketed by now. Yeah. Think of it in these terms. If you own a shop and you're, you've got customers in, you don't really care too much what the average amount spent by it each person who comes in, you just care at the end of the week, how much did we sell? Yeah. Oh, we sold okay. $10,000 worth of stuff. You don't care if that was from 1,000 customers or 1,500. It was we moved $10,000 worth of stuff. And that's why when we look at the total GDP, including population, that's why it's important because if that starts going down, that means in a sense the shop owner is going, oh, we only sold $9,000 worth of stuff this yeah. week. Might or, have to stop oh, giving people shifts. now we only sold $8,000 yeah. worth of stuff in the following week. Things aren't good. And at that point, you're not caring about averages. You're just going, things are not good. And I've said this in the past, the only reason, the only reason really to care about GDP is because it is linked to unemployment. Yeah. If GDP was just this nice economic thing that someone had came up with, which is actually what it is, someone, <laughs> someone after, basically after World War II, they would trying to work out how should we measure the economy and they came up with this nice formula, which all economic students learn by heart. But if that's all it was and it really was divorced from the quote-unquote real world, it would just be this thing that we'd think about but not really care about. You know, things like uh, the way we think about maybe even productivity or things like net national disposable income. It's like, yeah, it's measuring something, but yeah. what the hell does it mean? Yeah. The thing about GDP, though, when it rises by a small amount like it did in the past year, 1%, again, putrid, when that happens, unemployment starts rising. Historically, over the last 40-odd years or so, to keep unemployment flat, we need GDP to grow at about two and three quarter to close to sort of 3% each yeah. year. If it keeps growing like that, that means the economy is expanding. That means the people coming in, the people leaving school and going into the workforce, there's enough work for them to basically keep the unemployment stable. When it's slower, when it goes slower than that, unemployment starts rising. Yeah. yeah, This is why it's really crucial when we're talking about are we in a recession? GDP per capita recessions, yes, you do see unemployment rise like we have over the past year by about half a percentage point, which is not good and, as we said, is getting close to recessionary territory. But if you look back to what happened, say, during the 1990s and 1980s recession when we had real recessions, unemployment was going up by over a percent in a year. You know, And so instead of talking about going from 4 to 4.5%, we'd be talking about going from 4 to 5, 5.5%, and, a half, 6%, and yeah. that's real recession. Uh, now, this justifies uh, the way that we've managed the economy responsibly. Uh, fighting inflation as our primary concern, but doing that without slashing and burning. Interest rates should have already come down in Australia, but as we know from the Reserve Bank Governor, the federal and state Labor governments keep pumping more money into the economy, which is what's keeping inflation higher. And it frankly torpedoes a lot of the free advice that we got at budget time uh, to cut harder and harsher. Uh, that would have been a recipe for a much weaker economy. This is a treasurer who wants to fight everything and everyone except for his homegrown inflation. So what did the RBA chief, Michelle Bullock, have to say about all this? Well, she hasn't spoken directly about this, but where there has been some interesting aspects, and, and I should say at the time we're recording this, she is going to be giving a, a press conference later on in the day. But what's been quite interesting is commentators and even politicians and myself in my column, we've been looking at what she and others from the Reserve Bank have been saying about the economy beforehand. And uh, last month when they announced their decision to keep interest rates stable, she made a few comments and suggested that, oh, well, you know, there's too much demand in the economy, which is essentially saying there's too much growth in the economy. The economy is growing mm -hmm. too fast. 
people were spending too much money on services. We want to get those down. The reason why they want to get those down, services use a lot of people. So if there's a lot of people being employed to do things, that means wage rises will probably go up and that means inflation will go up. So they want to get services spending down. Another uh, assistant governor, Sarah Hunter, gave some evidence before a Senate committee and she used the terms, the economy is running a little bit hot. Uh, how, and this is how right does now. this and, work? <laughs> yeah, so this was in August. Yeah. These figures, which show barely any growth. Yeah. In fact, the economy only grew because of population. Not running hot whatsoever. Not running hot at all. Yeah. Um, if we dig a bit deeper, we see even when you include population growth, the only reason the economy grew was because of government spending. If you take out government spending, the economy was either flat or going backwards, even when you include extra population. Yeah. Spending on services actually fell. Spending on discretionary items or those non-essential things like dining out, recreation and sport, travel, things like that, that fell quite significantly, 1.1% compared to the first three months of the year. So all of these things happened in April, May and June, and yeah. yet we had in August the RBA saying, oh, things are running a bit hot. It's like, yeah, you got it wrong. Yeah, you got it was, really wrong. Were they completely wrong? wrong? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, a, a good way to think about it is in their projections for household consumption, so all of the things we spend our money on, that's not just in the shops, but that's also bills, buying new cars, travel, and I mean like travel on buses and trains and you know, commuting and things like that, insurance, all of those things. They were suggesting that in the 12 months to June that household consumption rise by about 1.1%. They were basically out by half. Yeah. Which you think, oh, well, that doesn't matter. Yeah, but household consumption makes up just over half of the entire economy. So right. their estimation yeah. of how fast half of the entire economy was growing was out by 50%, which is pretty much a sign that they got things <laughs> wrong, very <laughs> That's badly very wrong. very wrong, yeah. Especially when you think, okay, what does raising interest rates affect? Most directly, household spending because- your mortgage repayments have gone up, which means you can't spend more on other things. Yep. Household consumption falls. So they pretty clearly got wrong how much Australians were, in a sense, shutting their wallets and purses and, and not spending. They were thinking there was still a bit of heat that we need to get out and yep. the, the economy and households are going, are you kidding me? We are not going out doing anything fun, we're cutting back, even on essential items, we're uh, sort of, instead of buying the good brands, we're buying yep. the home radio, it's like- Cutting where we can. Yeah. yeah. And and it's, so it's pretty clear the RBA, I think, got it wrong. And what also was interesting in these figures is you can look at actually uh, household income, disposable income, which actually does include interest rate repayments. So it takes into account everything everyone earns, whether it's from doing your job, from interest, from term deposits, but also talks about how much tax you have to pay and also things like interest repayments that you have yeah. to do. And even though in April, May and June, the Reserve Bank didn't raise interest rates, the amount of um, repayments that households were doing did rise during those months. And that's because we know that it takes a long time for banks to pass on interest rate rises to yeah. everybody after the Reserve Bank does it. If you've got a home loan, uh, you might have got a letter in the mail saying, oh, interest rates have risen, they will rise, and it will be in three months' time. They're basically giving yeah. you advance warning. So it's something of an echo from the previous yeah. interest, and so interest rate rises. It, it just, and this is the thing the Reserve Bank has, has said a lot because it's true that it takes a while for the impact of interest rate rises to flow yeah. through. They just maybe should have listened to that themselves. <laughs> yeah, they probably did one more than they probably needed to. Yeah. And if people can remember, they actually paused and it seemed like, oh, that was the end of the rate cuts and then they did one more and it's like, okay, maybe yeah. that wasn't really needed. So we talked when we've talked about the multiple interest rate rises on the podcast before, we've talked a bit about wanting to sort of stick the landing, so to speak, when it comes to saving the uh, economy from too much inflation but also not causing a recession, do you think that they haven't stuck the landing then? Oh, look, I think, uh, well, 
they're, they're lucky on two fronts. They're lucky that population has grown mm. and the government has been spending. Yeah. If the government hadn't been doing that and if our population, and we're talking in migration, recovering from um, all the lockdowns we had in the, the pandemic, if we hadn't have had that, we would have been in recession. Yeah. So if you look at the private sector, and the private sector is basically households, businesses, and trade, when you're looking at those things, uh, we've been going backwards. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's pathetically weak, and that's the real demand in the economy. So they're very fortunate that the government has been spending because that has government spending goes into the economy. They're also lucky that that government spending has not actually been very inflationary because most of the spending has been in health and social assistance, essentially linked with the NDIS. Yeah. And that's not the kind of thing that um, leads to inflation. It's not like a big cash splash where everyone is getting money in their pockets and they're going and spending. But even, even if it was... You know, it's it's enough. It would just be keeping the economy going, which is kind of what a government should do when yeah. the economy is flat. The the only thing is here, the, the reason the economy is flat is because the Reserve Bank has been trying to kill it. <laughs> and the government's going, yeah, okay, but yeah. <laughs> let's not do too much. So, yeah. and, and also, you know, something that we have been arguing for a long time is that the Reserve Bank has got it wrong because they've been trying to lower inflation by raising interest rates because... They think there's too much demand. They think yeah. the economy is running a bit hot. And we've been saying, no, the economy has not been running a bit hot. Look at all the figures. It's really weak and it has been for a long time. The reason inflation is going up is because of supply side issues, because of world prices, because of invasions, because of company profits, all of those things. It hasn't been going up because we're all getting wage rises. Yeah. We're all getting these massive wage rises and going, wow, let's go shopping. So interest rate rises aren't going to No. Like, yeah. All they break will that. do because remember, and, and I think this is always good to remember because it does get confusing. The only reason why the Reserve Bank raises interest rates is because they want to slow the amount that we spend and also make it harder for businesses, especially small businesses, to take out a loan to invest to expand because they think, okay, if, if we're spending less and businesses aren't expanding as much, that means unemployment will probably rise because you're a shop owner, you're going, hey, we're not getting much money in here. Where are all the people? Oh, they're yep. paying their mortgage. Yeah, we don't need an extra shift or actually, sorry, we're going to have to let you go. When that happens... What happens to wage rises? Well, they're not going to be that strong because everyone's like, well, unemployment's rising. I'm just lucky to have my job. I'm not yeah, going to. Yeah, not going to ask for a raise. Yeah, I'm not going to ag yeah. agitate for a wage. And also, businesses aren't having to raise their wages to keep staff. Yeah. Because it's not like there's a whole lot of people employing out there. And as a result, so wages aren't going up fast and then business we're not all going out and spending and business going, wow, everyone's coming in here and spending. I can raise my prices and make more. So that's the equation. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is stop that last bit of us going out and spending. Their, their estimation was we were out there spending too much money. We've got to stop that by raising these interest rates and hopefully it'll flow down. But if that was wrong, which is what we've been arguing. Yeah, it's not All gonna... you would do, you'll still do the other things though. You'll still stop the ability for households to be able to spend, people to be able to spend because your mortgage repayments have gone up. Businesses are going to go, mm, not much spending. I'm going to cut back on staff. Yeah. Unemployment will rise, which we've seen. It's gone up nearly half a percentage point in the past year. Or and the dominoes like, will fall. Yeah, yeah, but it's not having an impact on inflation because that wasn't causing inflation. Yeah. You know? so it, and that's one of the reasons why we saw inflation come down from the highs along with the rest of the world because it was linked with a lot of what was going on in the rest of the world. If, if inflation was purely due to us all going out and spending so much, you would expect it to have kept falling because those interest rates were pretty big. They really have had a massive impact. But it's like the reason it's not going down should be a bit of a clue that maybe that's not the reason we, yeah. that inflation is high. It's not because we've all got so much money <laughs> and we're all spending. And if you look at these figures as well, we're hardly saving at all. We saved, I think it was like the, the savings ratio, which means of all the income we got, 
how much did we save? It was like 0.6%. Oh, yeah, God, overall. yeah. Now, that doesn't mean everyone was saving 0.6. That yeah. just means the total if you look at the whole economy. That's very low, yeah. really low, and it basically is a good indication that the only reason there was any increase in spending at all and all of the increase in spending in this in the June quarter was in on essential items, that was probably coming because we're like, well, we're going to save less than we have in the past yeah. in total. Not a good sign. Jim Chalmers courted some controversy for suggesting the RBA rate hikes had been smashing the economy. Making multiple mentions of the Reserve Bank's 13 interest rate hikes. And I think the Australian people, frankly, uh, expect me to tell it like it is. And I've been making that point for some months. What I said overnight wasn't new. So, Greg, the Treasurer, Jim Chalmers, had a few things to say before the figures came out. He blamed the RBA and said... With all this global uncertainty on top of the impact of rate rises, which are smashing the economy, it would be no surprise at all if the national accounts on Wednesday show growth is soft and subdued. Was he right to say this? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, there there has been a lot of criticism, including by John Howard, of all people, (laughs) um, saying, oh, how dare the Treasurer um, talk about the Reserve Bank, the independent Reserve Mm. Bank, which, yeah, okay, they're independent. That doesn't mean they're above criticism. Yeah. And the fact that they are independent, to my mind, means the Treasurer should be able to criticise them because they're independent. The Reserve Bank doesn't have to listen to him. Yeah. You know, you're allowed to voice your opinion. It, it's different and, you know, there's been some real hyperbole about him saying, oh, he's trying to control. It's, like, it's not like Trump where Trump would say, if you don't cut interest rates, I'm going to sack you and appoint yeah. someone who <laughs> will cut interest rates, you know. Yeah. Chalmers is basically saying what these figures show is that the economy is weak. Why is it weak? Because Reserve Bank raised interest rates, what was it, 325 basis points. I mean, yeah. that, that's a fact. And the, the, the reality that the Reserve Bank got the growth figures wrong about how households are spending, I think, shows his view to be pretty much on the ball. Like, he's right. They're wrong. Yep. He's not going to come out and say that. In fact, uh, in press conference after the GDP figures came out. Some um, mischievous journalists were trying to get him to kind of say that the Reserve Bank was incompetent or wrong or anything. And he yep, how of, mischievous of him. <laughs> and he was like, oh, you know, there's a range of uh, views and, you know, these things are tough to predict and things like that. But yep. all the while I think he was in his mind going, but, yeah, I was right, they were wrong. Yep. Um, so I have no problems with the, with him pointing it out because that's the picture. It it is. The Reserve Bank was saying that the economy is running a bit hot. Chalmers, pretty much the day those figures, uh, those statements were made, said, we don't agree. Yeah. I think the economy is is, uh, pretty weak and that's why we're spending. That's why we're doing the stage three tax cuts. You know, and certainly he was doing it to justify the government's own position and policies, but I think these figures bear mm. him out that he was right. Uh, the I economy mean, he, is not. Yeah. If, I mean, if, <laughs> if this is the economy running a little bit hot, I, I would hate <laughs> to see it when it's just right. Just a yeah. bit. Just, yeah, lukewarm. I mean, he did call them soft and subdued instead of putrid. So, yeah, you yeah. Know. well, you know, he's uh, more <laughs> He put tactful. it a bit more nicely <laughs> than you. <laughs> so what do the opposition have to say about all this? Well, they've obviously been pretty critical of Jim Chalmers and no. trying to defend the poor defenceless Governor of the Reserve Bank earning a million dollars a year. Uh, <laughs> I feel bad for her, Greg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a big girl. I think she could handle a little bit of criticism. But yeah. also, yeah, they've been critical of that, trying to make it sound like, oh, you're not allowed to criticise the Reserve Bank, which is, as I say, wrong. But also they are getting into sort of pre-election mode and starting to say, oh, the main problem that inflation is high is because of government spending. And so we're mm. going to cut the budget, you know, there's been figures thrown around about we're going to find $100 billion in savings, which, that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if the only thing that's keeping us from going into recession at the moment is government spending, that seems to me like a pretty terrible idea. Yeah, they're going to struggle to square the circle of that one because, yeah, as I said, the only reason the economy grew at all was because of government spending. If you start cutting back that, you know, things are going to, to look bad. I mean... One of the things in their favour, I guess you can say, is, look, we're probably not going to have an election until, let's say, April, May next year. Yeah. Hopefully by then, and certainly by then, 
the predictions are the interest rates will be starting to come down. Interest rates coming down help speed up the economy now. The only problem with that is, and I've said this in the past, interest rates are very strong in slowing the economy, pretty weak in getting it going. Yeah. It's the old line, you know, brakes of a Ferrari, engine of a Model T Ford. You know, they <laughs> they really, because it's instantaneous, you you have to pay that that mortgage. Yeah. But one, banks can be a bit uh, slow in cutting your interest rates. And also once you've got that, there's this sense of, one, I might just keep my repayments where they were. Doesn't mm. mean you're going to necessarily lower them. Um, whereas, you know, you can't avoid having to increase your, your repayments and things like that. So the upshot is hopefully this might be the bottom of where we are. I mean, that's, th- that's some hope. Yeah. Well, the next figures will have the stage three tax cuts in. Yeah. That will certainly have an impact, especially on household spending. Uh, it'll be interesting, though, to see what happens with savings, uh, whether people do actually spend all that or whether they're able to save it. I think there will be a fair bit of increase in spending, especially in essential items. Yeah. So that's going to have an impact. We won't be getting any more rate rises. I think you can pretty much take that to the bank, as they say. <laughs> the Reserve um, Bank. Hopefully. It would be just astonishing if they yep. were. So that means we're not going to have so much of a drag on economic growth from increased rate rises. They'll still be high, but they're not. Things aren't getting worse in yep. that regard. So it might be the case that by the middle of the next year, actually, the economy is maybe not running a bit hot, but it's running okay, and we're not as reliant on government spending to keep things going. But I think the upshot of it is the gov- the opposition, sorry, is are trying to say, oh, the reason inflation high is because of government spending. Whereas really when you look at these figures, you go, actually, no, government spending is the only thing keeping out of a, a set of recession. Which yeah. would you prefer? Inflation at around three and a half percent and not being in a recession <laughs> or being in a recession and, un- and inflation is maybe at three percent. And as I say, remember, inf- recessions mean unemployment rising, rising quickly. And the problem with recessions, real recessions as opposed to per capita ones, is they're very hard to control. Once things turn ugly, everyone starts thinking, okay, it's going to be ugly for a while. I'll cut back on spending. I'll cut back on staff. I'll cut back on investing. And it steamrolls and it takes a while to rebound. And so that's why I think we can certainly say no more interest rate rises. I think if the Reserve Bank would do that, that it would be just chaos. Well, I th- I think they, I'd be demanding they'd be sacked. Really. Yeah, I mean, it's that bad. It would be, it would be so negligent. Yeah. of a way to look at the economy that is like this and go, oh, you you know what it needs? We need to hit households a bit more when they're already going backwards. So that's one good thing. The bad thing is that. Uh, you know, interest rates take a while to unwind. So there is, I think, uh, a we might be at the bottom, the t- but it, yeah. Yeah, it might take a while to, to improve. So Greg's hopeful message to the people, it's not going to get worse than this anytime soon? Yeah, well, I mean, the market is expecting there to be four interest rate cuts in the next 18 months. Okay. Now, that was before these figures came out. I think... If anything, these figures would maybe have people wondering as the Reserve Bank going to bring that first cut forward a bit. Yeah. You know? But certainly I think there is relief on the way um, and hopefully so because the last thing, and I said this last week, last thing we want to see is unemployment rising because that's really what a recession is about. All right, so that's probably all we've got time for today, Greg. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll be back with another Dollars and Cents next week. I know there are some figures about house prices, so we might be talking that, but we'll wait and see what the economy brings us. This episode of Dollars and Cents was recorded on Thursday, the 5th of September, and some things may have changed. You can find my column with all the graphs on what was going on with the GDP on the Guardian Australia site. And for more research, especially those looking at what is driving inflation and certainly counteracting the the view that the economy is running a bit hot, go to our website, which is at australiainstitute.org.au. My Twitter handle and the handle I use for all social media is at grogsgamut and Eleanor's is at Eleanor J underscore L. Wonderful. Our theme music is from Blue Dot Sessions. Thank you all for listening. See you all next week. (laughs) 